So we looked at campers. And we didn't want to live in a camper. <laughs> and so on the drive home from looking at that camper, Zach said, well, what about those yurts that we stayed in on the coast? And that was it. We contacted our local yurt company. We happened to have one near. And we bought it. So the first time we set up the yurt, we found some people through Craigslist that were looking for, like, to help them supplement their mortgage payments by, like, having some folks living on their property. And we needed some kind of security that we knew where we could put the yurt before we actually bought it. And so when we met these folks and they were just so awesome and we were all on the same page, that was what we needed. Part of our story is that we have set up our yurt on four different locations, four different pieces of property. And each time we've approached it and dealt with it in different ways. So then we put it on some family's land in the woods. And now we have our own very rural piece of land. Because we were able to save for it and because of the year. Yeah, the financial and, and the way that we lived. Freedom that yeah. we got in yeah, financial freedom but also like the confidence and like personal experience to get us to this point and now um, we have our own land which has given us and empowered us to be able to, to permit it this time. So we purchased the land and then we got a permit for it from the county. And one thing I think about that that really was helpful is that we live in an area now where there's a yurts are pretty common and I think that it was easier to permit because the county is familiar with yurts and the concept and that made it a little bit more simple and straightforward. All we had to provide was a way that we were dealing with our human waste um, and a composting toilet was permittable for that. Composting toilets can look a lot of different ways and a bucket is enough with a, a toilet seat, and we've had that before, and it's manageable, and I don't feel that a commercially composting toilet is in any way superior to a bucket system, except for that it is legitimate in the eyes of a government institution and allows you to get a permit. But I think that composting is a really straightforward way to deal with waste off the grid. We've carried our water a lot, and I don't mind it too bad. I think I use significantly less water than I thought I did in general, and maybe part of it is that I've learned to use less water since we're carrying it. But you really don't need a whole lot of water to wash your hands, cook, and do dishes. On the daily, I don't know, we were usually using... A couple gallons? A couple gallons a day, maybe. Yeah drinking too. I, I think that rain collection is underutilized. You can collect a lot of rain in the eastern United States. Right, but when we started we were in an arid climate. We were in the western United States. So we didn't order like the, the yurt with a, a gutter system or anything and yeah. we never put in the energy to, to make that happen because it wasn't going to rain anyway. There's always been some things that we just d did without or learned how to do with less of. Electricity is something we're working on at the moment. And in the past, we ran an extension cord from our neighbors. And that was simple and easy and you don't have to think about it. We don't have that luxury now with a rural property. So we just haven't had electricity. We have um, like one of those little travel solar panels which helps us just yeah. charge our phone. A Bluetooth speaker. And then headlamps and oil lamps. Candles. And candles. Um, but obviously it's difficult to live like that. So we're working on a small solar array to provide us with those simple electrical needs like lights. Also a gas powered generator is how we've charged things like power tool, lithium ion batteries, 
and tools that we've used to build the yurt that aren't battery operated. To run a circular saw. Those bigger things that you can't can't do without. We rely on fossil fuels for our four-wheeler, for our chainsaw. Cooking with a propane stove, our heating fuel is has always been wood and a wood stove. That adds quality to life. We love heating with wood, with firewood. We love harvesting firewood. It's something we really enjoy doing together. We also are interested in just stewardship of our forests and caring for the health of our native species and who and the plant kingdom is occupying this land with us. To have my own space to steward, to take care of the land and live in harmony with it and, and rely on it. I think in general that is a good explanation of what you and I are engaging in and are passionate about and probably what a lot of people who are interested in this lifestyle are passionate about is just that bringing back closer to yourself the knowledge and the responsibility for your own needs. You just close the loop on, on those systems that you need to be a human. And we're nowhere close to closing that loop. We still rely so heavily on the outside world. And we are gonna just engage in this lifelong journey of trying to get closer to that. The yurt has been a fantastic structure to provide shelter for us in the different places that we've lived. And a very simple structure to live in, to build, to tear down and to move. And a vessel for growing and expanding our awareness of how to live. Maybe. Maybe.